Well, greetings, uh, dear friend. This is H.D. McCarty, uh, your old Razorback Rabbi from Fayetteville, Arkansas. And I guess that title is uh, especially appropriate today because here, here in uh, what we call hog land, there's a great sadness. Uh, Coach Frank Broyles, who uh, came to Arkansas in 1958, uh, was our great football coach won the national championship, went on to be athletic director of the university and didn't retire until I think it was 2004, uh, built some of the finest. In fact, we're rated one of the top 10 schools in America in facilities. And he did most of that just raising money outside the uh, 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 student fees and all, and uh, debt for the state, gifts. He's did a fantastic job. We're an all-sports school, which we worked when he came, just football, but now every sport, men and women, uh, are funded and have their great facilities. So Frank Brawls was indeed a wonderful man. One of his top assistants uh, when he was interviewed he said he was not only a great ethic, uh, ethical man, he was also a Christian. And of course, that's where I figure in. I came to Fayetteville in 65. Uh, Frank had been here about seven years, and I got to know him. I can't get into all the details for this brief time we have together. But uh, he got to know me, I got to know him. Many of the football players started attending my church. I was the pastor. And I had a Bible study in the athletic dorm that uh, many, many of the athletes would come to from all sports. We would have 70s, 80 people out every Thursday night. And a lot of people were after the athletes, wanting them to do this, wanting them to do that. and. Uh, uh, of course, Balls felt we needed a chaplain kind of to keep it together so we don't get fragmented and ask me uh, to be the chaplain. And I was on a volunteer basis, if you can believe this, for almost a little over 30 years. Now, boy, I could tell you a lot of stories with coaches, all the head coaches I knew, the players, uh, the staff. Where do you even begin? And Several people have asked me, they said they'd like to hear just a few things. What would I say about Coach Brawls? I have, uh, I made a little list of the outstanding things here and there, 25, and we can never hit them right here, but let me just uh, share a few of them. That's what I do. Uh, first of all, uh, Coach always talked about a charm life. He said the Lord has given him a charm life. It's amazing, he said, in what he's done, his opportunities. He was a national commentator uh, for NCAA on a Saturday afternoon sports. You name it, and he's pretty well done it. And uh, one of his favorite stories is at the end of World War II, uh, he was in the Navy Reserve, and uh, his first assignment was in April. They sent him to Washington to go to Europe, but when he got to Washington, and been there a few days, not, Germany surrendered. And so he said, man, that's pretty good. I go in active duty and Germany surrenders in a few days. Well, they decided they'd send him out to the Pacific and fight Japan. And he said the, the day he landed in, Ho in Hawaii on his way, you know, to fight for the Japanese, they surrendered the next day. And so he said, I guess I had some authority because uh, it didn't take me long uh, to get rid of both of them. We always laugh about that and then what he said uh, about his uh, military experience. Uh, I told him one time he's a lot like General MacArthur. I'd read a tremendous book about MacArthur, and Coach Brawl seemed to be kind of austere and kind of above everything, but he really wasn't if you got to know him because it said of MacArthur, MacArthur wasn't that way. He was so committed to the highest principle for our country that it seemed everything else was negative. 
And I told Coach Balls, he's that way. He's so committed to the program we have at university that somebody could uh, think that he wasn't personal. But I can still remember the last time I saw him just before he died, his smile, how he waved, and he had a compassionate heart. There's no doubt about that. He always talked about the team uh, having character. He had his Georgia accent, you know, a southern accent. And he said, men, we need to have character, character. And uh, uh, that team that won the national championship was playing Baylor one time, and they had about two minutes to go, and Baylor was ahead. And if Arkansas, I think we're on their 10-yard line, they needed to move 90 yards or 80 uh, to score and win. Uh, they went to the huddle, and uh, uh, Jim Lindsay, one of my dearest friends who was on the team just before they called the, the play, Jerry Jones, who now owns the Dallas Cowboys, was one of the members of that team, and before they called the play, Jerry said, man, I got one thing to say. If we can move this ball in less than two minutes, 80 yards down the field, and win, we have character. <laughs> I'll never forget that, a great Greek word, incidentally, docomus, and it means to, we get our word document and doctor from it, and that's what character is. Character is able to handle whatever comes before you. Oh, that was a great thing. Uh, in 1969, we played for the national championship here in Fayetteville, uh, played Texas, and President Nixon came, and Billy Graham came. Coach Balls had me over to the house. Billy came by and to visit with him uh, in his house, and he called me up, he and his wife, and wanted me to come over, and I went over and met and talked to uh, Dr. Billy Graham, uh, probably the world's greatest evangelist, and I told him that of the starting 22 Razorbacks, that 15 of them were in my Bible study every week. And uh, then uh, Billy Graham said, well, he said, I guess I'll have to pray for Arkansas. So I knew that we'd win then, but it didn't work out that way. Texas beat us by one point. Boy, that was a black day at Black Rock in the Hogland when that happened. But I can't go back into that again. But anyway, uh, Coach Balls had a real commitment to Christianity, uh, especially the Fellowship of Christian Athletes where we worked together uh, to, uh, to impress the young men of their need. We didn't push Jesus on them, but we, they knew that uh, we stood there and wanted them to go as high as they could uh, spiritually uh, in their life, and scores of them did. i never forget the wonderful time we had. He weakened one time. I, this is a funny story. We had a great lineman from Texas. He came up, and uh, uh, he was really going to play for us, and yet he found the faith and uh, decided to get baptized. And it was in October, and they had a river baptism. And uh, as he went out into the water to be baptized in the river, uh, someone had thrown a broken beer bottle out. He stepped on it, messed up his foot, took about 18 stitches, and of course he couldn't play for about a month. And all Coach Ball said about that to me was that, well, HD, if it's possible, he said, uh, uh, let's try not to have any more river baptisms during the season. <laughs> How about that? Uh, no need to risk a good athlete in a river baptism if we can wait till the season is over. I, I talked to him about winning in sports. And he said there are three essential things if you're going to win in sports and if you're going to win in life. He says the first thing to do is prepare. You have to prepare what you're going to do. Many Christians aren't prepared to live the Christian life. They don't have any plan. And secondly, he said you've got to practice your plan uh, to really know what that plan is. And uh, that's why... He, go out during the week, you don't just show up on Saturday. And then after you practice your plan, you got to play with emotion. I remember how he said it. He said, no athlete will ever win any 
contest without emotion. And so what makes a great athlete is also what makes a great Christian. Preparation, practice, and passion. That's pretty good, isn't it? In fact, that's what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 2. He said, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, like a soldier, like an athlete, and like a farmer. And if you talk about those three things, the soldier plans to die. If you, if you don't plan to die, you're never going to be much as a military man. And then the athlete prepares to win, you know, and that he practices and practices to win. And then the farmer, what does he do? He plants to reap. And boy, it takes passion to get out there and plant in the heat and to wait, see? And that's one of the great, uh, greatest lessons I've ever learned from Coach Frank Brawls. And, of course, his advice, I heard him say it so many times, don't beat yourself. A lot of us beat ourselves up because we listen to the snake and don't listen to the Lord. Well, I asked him one time, uh, we were on a bank board together among some of our activities up here, and I got the chance to take him home a lot, and we talked. And I asked him one time, I said, uh, Coach, it seems to me about the most hopeless thing on earth was to know that you're the coach for a team that the last two or three years uh, had a record of 0-12. They didn't win a game and lost all of the others. Good night. What would you say to a team like that? Uh, I'd hate to even think that I was going to <laughs> have to coach a team like that. He said, oh, I wouldn't mind. He said, that'd be a real challenge. And I said, well, what would you say to them? Zero twelve, zero twelve. Man, that's discouraging. You talk about no morale. Yes, but you have to build the morale. And all you have to do is what is necessary. And I said, well, what's that? What would you say? And he said, well, I know exactly what I'd say first. I would simply stand and say, gentlemen, we need to improve. <laughs> and boy, that says it, doesn't it? And I guess I'll sign off for that. I could go on another 30 minutes or so. Uh, I think Coach Brawls, as I'm going to use this when I talk about him some and the athletes and all, I'll be talking around if he had one last message for you and for me, he'd say, H, improve. Improve. And that's what the Lord would tell us to improve. Keep improving. Keep continuing. Keep preparing yourself. Keep practicing what you know is right. And play life with passion. He certainly did. And in this great verse in Samuel, David said of King Saul uh, when he found out that he had been killed and his son along with him, Jonathan, uh, uh, he said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain in the heights. In other words, we've lost one of our greatest leaders. And then David says, uh, How the mighty have fallen. See, Coach Brawls did a fantastic job. He was a great sacrificer. And the reason most people don't realize what a great sacrifice he made uh, is that few people sacrifice greatly. You have to sacrifice greatly to really know what great sacrifice is or else you'll never know it. I finished a little paper here. Uh, Coach Brawls, a a double legacy revealed. And if you have our number there, something like that, how you can contact us, uh, let us hear from you and I'll send you a copy of this. It's just three and a half pages. And it's a summary of how I see his life. The mighty have fallen. I hope you and I grow mighty in Jesus Christ, both in our secular jobs and our spiritual challenges. Father, I thank you for the life of my dear friend, Frank Broyles. And I pray for everyone listening to me today that uh, 
we will make one vow as a result of this time together. If we're going to live a great discipleship life, there's only one thing for us to do, improve. And I pray each of us will vow to do that right now. In your dear name, amen.